Hello, and welcome back to Wit Hit Game Audio. This week's episode will be delving into some of the basic forms of vocal audio and wise in Unity, particularly narration. Now, the original plan for this episode involved Wise's dynamic dialogue system, a function that allowed a certain audio file to be called after a series of conditions are met. While this is a very simple system to learn and use in Wise, it's a completely different story when implementing the dynamic dialogue events into Unity, or frankly, any major game development system due to its lack of support, updates, or learning material. So instead, I have figured out basic workarounds to develop a similar system that is nearly just as effective and efficient as the dynamic dialogue system. As a brief table of contents, before we get started, I'll first use sequence containers to make narration that does not rely on conditions and does not change based on decisions made by the character. While I'm at it, I'll also show off Wise's localization system for those of you who are designing games with multiple languages. Then, I'll look into two examples of dynamic dialogue, a system that only has one or two arguments or conditions to meet, and a system that has multiple arguments for conditions to meet. Then in Unity, we'll integrate this audio using some of Wise's integrated scripting language, like event callbacks, switch and state changes, and event posting. And that's it. Ready? Let's get started. In this project, I'm going to be giving a player a mission, tracking how the player completes the mission, and then we're going to switch gears and I'm going to imitate an announcer for a hockey game, making commentary on the player's ability to pass to other players and to take a shot to the goal. So that gives me two effects to work with, a sort of walkie-talkie effect for the first mission, then a big loud echo effect for the hockey narrator. For the mission coordinator voiceovers, I used Acon Digital Equalize 2 and Solid EQ by Native Instruments. For the hockey narrator voiceovers, I used Acon Digital Equalize 2 Solid EQ by Native Instruments, and RC48 Reverb by Native Instruments in collaboration with Softube. The first thing we're going to do is make your project in Unity and connect it to your project in Wise. If you're not sure how to do it, I'll link you to the previous video to show you how, or I can show you documentation on the subject. The first part is going to give us the tools to play our mission statement at the beginning of the game. No matter what, this narration will play exactly the same at the beginning of the game without any chance of alteration, so we can use sequence containers to make each bit of audio come out one after the other with no change. But we will also look into the localization feature, so we can play this narration in both English and Spanish. Go over to your audio tab and make yourself a new sequence container. Name it whatever suits your game best. Next, upload all of your audio files into the sequence containers. But before importing them, make sure you switch them over to sound voices rather than sound effects. Sound voices as well allows you to organize the same audio files but in different languages. If you haven't already, splice the audio files to your liking. I'll do so now. Now that we have all of our English sound files, we're going to make it possible to add in Spanish files to these sound voices. Go up to Project, then Languages, then add Spanish to your WISE project. Now in your sound voices, you'll see both English and Spanish, with English already filled with our original sound files. I'm going to drag in my Spanish audio files, which I 100% recorded myself. Now if I were to select any of these sound voices, I'll hear the English version of the file. Hello? Hello? But if I go up to the top left, switch to Spanish, and try my sound voices, I'll hear the Spanish version instead. Hola? Hola? Puedes escucharme? 
This is how a developer can easily switch from one language to another with just the flip of a single switch. I'm going to switch back to English and go into my sequence container. From here, I can make any edits to all of my sound files as volume, pitch, low pass filter, and high pass filter. But for now, I'm going to focus on the sequence container's play mode. By default, the play mode will be set to step, which means that every time the sequence container is played, it'll simply play the next audio file in the sequence. But continuous mode will play all of the audio files in the sequence in order without stopping. To use continuous mode more effectively, you might want to add a short delay to each of the audio files after the first, so that the end of each audio file doesn't immediately go straight into the beginning of the next audio file. But for now, we're going to set the play mode to step. And that's it. Very simple narration in both English and Spanish. Go to the event tab, make an event, I'll name mine narration SC, and drag your sequence container into the event so that the event will play the sequence container. Then hit F7 to go to the sound bank layout. Make a new sound bank, which I'll call main, and drag your new event into the main sound bank. Then check Windows, Mac, English, and Spanish before generating your sound bank. Now we're going to briefly switch gears from our mission briefing in order to become an announcer for a hockey game. Using our revised dynamic dialogue system, we'll be looking for the player's name, the action that the player is performing, and how that action is resolved. In this case, Danny, John, or Mike will either be passing the puck to other players or shooting the puck into the goal. First, I'm going to add in my audio files and splice them just like I did before. In this case, I will make them into sound effects files again, since I only intend to play them in English. Then, I'm going to move them into 10 different random containers. Danny, John, and Mike will each have a container for both passing and shooting. There will be a container for the puck to be passed to Danny, John, and Mike. And of course, there will be a container for when the player scores. We'll come back to that in a moment. Go to the Game Sings tab and make three new state groups. Player name player action, and end action. In player name, add our three players, Danny, John, and Mike. In player action, add passes and shoots. Then in end action, add and scores to Danny, to John, and to Mike. Now that we have our state groups, go back to the audio tab and make two switch containers, naming them player name and end actions. Note that we are not making a player action switch container. In the end action switch container, add in the end scores to Danny, to John, and to Mike random containers. In the switch container, set the group to the end action state group, leaving the default to none. Then assign three random containers to their appropriate objects. Then in the player name switch container, add three more switch containers, naming them Danny, John, and Mike. In the player name switch container, set the group to player name, again leaving the default to none, and attach each of the name switch containers to their appropriate objects. Now drag in all of the passes and shoots random containers into the appropriate name switch containers, so that Danny, Mike, and John all have two random containers within them. For Danny's, Mike's, and John's switch container, set the group to the player action state group, keep the default at none, and assign the correct objects for passing and shooting. We now have everything set up. Basically, we have a small hierarchy of arguments that the game's looking to solve for. It's a look for the player name, and whether that player is passing or shooting. Then it'll play an audio file from those two choices. Then if the player is passing, it'll figure out who the player is passing to and play an audio file from that. Or it'll play the end scores audio file if the player shoots and scores. And he scores! I couldn't believe it! And it goes to John. Now all we have to do is make two events to play the player name and end action switch container. Once that's done, 
Place them in the main sound bank, generate your sound bank, and save your WISE project. Now we'll go back to our mission briefing. Our commanding officer instructed us to jump over a hurdle, pass under an archway, and to walk onto one of two paths. That's three objectives, each with an opportunity to pass or fail. Or in the case of the path, you can walk on the red path, the green path, or simply don't walk on either path. So let's briefly organize what audio files we need. If a player doesn't go over the hurdle, then they can't even do the remainder of the objectives, and thus fails the whole mission. That's one audio file. If they go over the hurdle, then do nothing else. That's a second audio file. If they go over the hurdle and under the archway, but go on no path, that's three. Then if they go on the red path, that's four. And finally, if they succeed in the whole objective and go on the green path, they'll be victorious and get the fifth good audio. Make your five audio files or splice them into five audio files in WISE. Head over to the Game Syncs tab and make three switch groups, Hurdle, Archway, and Path. Both Hurdle and Archway will have a switch for Fail and Pass, while Path will have a switch for Fail, Red, and Green. Go back to the Audio tab and make a new parent switch container. In this switch container, add in our first audio file and make a new Archway switch container. In the parent switch container, set the switch group to hurdle and default to fail. Assign our audio file to fail and assign the archway switch container to pass. Let's repeat the process. Move on to the archway switch container. Add the second audio file and a new path switch container within the archway switch container. In the archway switch container, set the archway switch group and default to fail. Assign the audio file to fail and the path switch container to pass. Last time, move on to the path switch container and add in the remaining three audio files. Set the switch group to path and default it to fail. Assign the third audio file to fail, the fourth audio file to red, and finally, the fifth audio file to green. Let's go back and go over what we did. If you fail the hurdle test, you won't even see the rest of these switch containers. You will simply play the fail message. If you pass, you will move on to the archway test. Fail this one, and you won't see the path switch container. You'll simply play the archway fail message. Pass the archway test, and you'll move on to the final path switch container, which will check to see if you went on to the red or green path, or if you went on no path at all. All three of these conditions will pass you to a specific audio file. Hope that wasn't too complicated. Make a new event, which I'll call Mission, and drag in your parent switch container. Add it to the sound bank, generate the sound bank, and save your WISE project. Before we start integrating our audio, we'll need to make our map and give the ability for a player to move around in it. This map was made using the Snaps prototype Sci-Fi Urban Pack by Asset Store Originals. The player we are using is the first person controller from Standard Assets found in the Unity Store. If you need help with integrating Standard Assets into your project, there is a link in the description that will lead you to my previous video, which discusses the matter in greater depth. With that out of the way, we will now begin with the mission briefing that we made in Part 1 of WISE. This will take a bit of scripting, which I will explain as I make it. Make a new empty object and name it Narrator. Within this object, make a narration script and remove the update function. The first thing we're going to do is make a few variables. First, public game object player, which will change the display of our narration script on our narrator object. We're going to drag our first person controller into this new field. This is so the script can recognize who the player is. The next two variables will be used later in the script. Private int narration equals zero, and private object wait time. Now inside of the start function, we're going to have it start the play narration function. So the first thing the game does when it loads up into the map is play our narration. Now we're going to make the void play narration function below the start function. And below that, make two more functions. 
void narration end and i enumerator wait. If you can recall, we made a sequence container with five audio files, and every time we call the narration event, it'll play each of those audio files in sequence. So we need to make sure that the event gets called only five times and stops. Otherwise, it'll just keep resetting the sequence container indefinitely. Here's how we do that. First, we're going to make an if statement. If narration is equal equal to five, for now, leave it blank. Then under else, we're going to post our event. Normally, we would simply tell Unity which event we're playing and where we're going to play the event. In this case, we're playing the narration SC event on the player. Then we'd play the event four more times and be done. However, the problem with that is there is currently no delay between each iteration of the event. This means that all five events will be played at the same time. Not very good. We need to know when the event ends so that we can play the next event after the first one finishes. We can do this by using what's known as an event callback. Basically, Unity is asking Wise when an event finishes. And when Wise responds, Unity will be able to work with that information. So first add AK sound engine dot post event narration as C player. This is how we would normally post the event, but now we add the callback. You int in parentheses AK callback type dot AK underscore end of event narration end and finally wait time. The end of event callback is how Unity is asking Wise for when the event is ending. The wait time is where Wise is sending its information back to Unity. A narration end is what function will play when Wise finally answers Unity after the event is over. Right after that code, we are going to add narration plus plus to add one to the narration variable. This will be important later. And now there's more. Go into the narration end function that we created earlier. Inside the parentheses, add object in underscore cookie, ak callback type in underscore type, and object in underscore info. We are not personally using any of this information. It's simply the information that Wise and Unity are passing to and from each other in order to make the end of the event callback work. <sighs> the worst is over. Once we get to the narration end function, we know that the event that we just played has finished playing and we can move on to playing the next event. We can simply do the play narration function again from here, but I want to add a tiny one second delay between playing each event. We can do that by using what's known as a coroutine. So inside of narration end, you're going to add start coroutine wait. Last thing, inside of the I enumerator wait, we're going to add yield return new wait for seconds 1f. Then, add the play narration function. Put it simply, this entire function's purpose is to wait for one second before starting this entire process over again. Since that was a lot of scripting, let's summarize how this function is going to work. Our narration variable starts at zero. It'll play our event and wait until the event is over to tick the narration variable up by one and start our wait coroutine. It's going to wait for one second before going back to the play narration function again and doing the whole process over again. It's going to do that five times before it reaches our narration five threshold, and then the whole process finally stops. Don't worry, that's the most complicated scripting we're going to do for this video. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, good. Listen, I need you to do something very, very important for me. In front of you, are these little obstacles that I need you to overcome. I just need you to jump over the hurdle, go under the archway, and go to the green path. Not the red one. That would be bad. If you could do that for me, that would greatly help us over here in corporate. Over and out. <laughs>《Now that the player has been given their mission briefing, they need to go on their mission. The game needs to figure out if they've actually gone over the hurdle, went under the archway, and journeyed onto the green or red pathway. In order to do that, we're going to make box colliders for the hurdle, archway, and both of the paths.
In each of the box colliders, make sure to disable the mesh renderer, and inside of the collider, check the Is Trigger checkbox. Now for the hurdle in the archway, make an AK switch and change the trigger on to AK Trigger Enter, and check the Use Other Object checkbox. Put in the correct switch name for the hurdle and the archway. We're going to do something a little different with the two paths, which is just going to be a fancy long-winded way to set each path's state, then post the mission event so that the narrator can say something about the player going on either the red or green path. And this will make sense in a little bit. Select both of the box colliders for the red and green path and add a mission complete script. In this script, we're going to add two variables. Public static bool mission complete equals false and public AKYs switch mission switch. A bool is basically a two switch variable that checks if something is true or false. So right now, the mission is not complete, so it's false. The public static simply means that this variable will be accessible from other scripts. We'll need that later. Now get rid of start and update and add a void on trigger enter collider other. And inside of it, we're going to make an if statement. If mission complete is false, then we're going to set the mission complete to true, since we have now made it onto the path and finished the mission. Then we're going to set the switch to either red or green, depending on which switch we put into the mission switch variable. Then we're going to post the mission event on the other game object, which is us, the player. Then make an else statement, leaving it blank. Back into Unity, make sure to set our switches in the mission complete script red for the red path, and green for the green path. Now let's test it out. We'll hear the mission briefing, then we'll go on to either the red or green path and get the corresponding response. Over and out. Hey, look at that, you came through. Come and claim your reward when you're ready. That's working pretty well, but here's the problem. The only two endings that we can possibly get right now is either when we go on the red or the green path. We don't have a fail condition for our hurdle, archway, or if we don't pick a path. So I'm going to set a five second timer, and if the player doesn't make it to one of the paths in time, the mission will end and the results will be played. We can accomplish all of this in our narration script from part one. First, we're going to add a public static bool just like we did in the other script, call it narration end, and set it to false. Now, head into the start function, and inside of our if statement, we're going to set narration equal to true, basically telling Unity that our mission briefing is now complete. Now, we're going to head to the bottom and make a new function, i.e. numerator, wait to. We're going to do a similar thing here that we did in the first wait function, yield return new, wait for seconds, 5f. Below that, we're going to utilize the bool variable that we made in the mission complete script. So make if mission complete dot mission complete equals equals false. Be very careful with your capitalization here. The first mission complete with a capital M is referencing the script mission complete, while the second mission complete with a lowercase m is referencing the variable mission complete. Inside of the if statement, add ak sound engine post event mission player. So if the player has spent 5 seconds and has not completed the mission, then we are going to post the event, which will look at what actions the player has performed. Then make an else statement and leave it blank. This just ensures that if the player has completed the mission by going onto a path, they'll get the end result from the mission complete script rather than getting the end result from both scripts. Now we just need to call this wait to function. Go back to the if statement in our start function, and underneath narration end equals true, add a start coroutine wait to. Let's test this out. Hello? Can you hear me? Over and out. Seriously? This was important to us, and you failed. Leave, and never come back.
This last part is very simple. Since this video series is going to focus on audio integration, I won't go through the trouble of teaching you how to make an actual hockey game. Your game developer should be able to give you some basic cues on how a player is passing the puck from one player to the next, or when a player scores a shot. For now, I just made six buttons on the floor, each setting a different state and playing a different event. Just for a quick summary of what I do in this section, I'm adding to my narration script to set me to a random character name, Danny, John, or Mike. This will utilize the AK Sound Engine .set script. Then, I'm going to edit the box glider on all six of my buttons. I'm going to add an AK event which triggers on AK Trigger event and uses other object as the trigger. Two of these buttons will be calling the player name event, while four of these buttons will be calling the end actions event. Then, I'm adding an AK state which will also trigger on AK Trigger event and will use other object as the trigger. I will add in all the appropriate states to these buttons, passes, shoots, to Danny, to John, to Mike, and finally, and scores. This is all purely for demonstration purposes. Let's test out our sounds. Danny makes a shot. And Danny passes. And he scores! How amazing was that? And it goes to Danny. Straight over to John. And it goes straight to Mike. And that's it for this video. This will be one of many videos delving into vocal audio since the topic is so broad, so please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell in order to be alerted to future episodes. Check out the Google Doc below for reference material that was used in researching this video so you can broaden your knowledge or hopefully clarify something that wasn't quite clear in this video. Have any questions, comments, or suggestions for me? Feel free to compose a comment below or message me in my Twitter, at CarrotComposer. This video series is driven by community support, so if there's something you would like to see in a future video, whether it be a specific topic or using a platform other than Unity and WISE, do not be afraid to ask. Otherwise, I'll see you all next Thursday with a special short video.